G'day guys and welcome to another episode of the Aussie Investing Machine. Thanks for joining me this week. In this episode, I'd like to go over how I personally quickly research stocks for the purpose of investing, but also for making videos for the channel. I think this is a really useful skill to know um, and I hope it will serve to improve your investing approach. You might learn something along the way. So I thought I'd make this video. Now, obviously there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is just my approach. So let me know in the comments below if perhaps you do something differently. By the way, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks for all of your support throughout 2020. Looking forward to a really good 2021 for the channel. Now I'm recording this video in a bit of a different setup. Um, I'm at the computer today, so I'll be going back and forward between this camera and the computer um, so you can see exactly what I'm doing in real time. As a result, I won't be editing this video as much, so it might take a bit longer to get through, but I urge you to stick around. There's a lot of important, valuable information that hopefully I can offer in this video. So really appreciate if you stuck around to the end of the video uh, where I'll get into the nitty gritty of what to do if we find a company um, that is worthy of investing in. So for the purpose of this video, I thought we'd pick one company um, and analyze them and see whether or not they're worthy of further investment or investigation into their financials. Uh, the company I've chosen for this video is Talga Group. Um, I haven't done an in-depth video into this company before, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to do that with you guys um, in this environment. If you like this video format, again, let me know. Don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'm considering doing a live stream as well on YouTube where I can answer all of your questions um, again in this format. If that's something you'd like to see, again, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Okay, so we'll get started. Uh, we'll head over to the computer screen first of all. Um, I've just got a checklist here um, on Google Docs, uh, which sets out the format for the video. Uh, essentially, first of all, we're gonna try and understand the business operations and the future goals of the business. We'll start there. Then we'll conduct a high level financial review. We'll go through the company's competitors and whether or not they've got a competitive advantage in the market. We'll look at the key risks for the company and how they might uh, influence our investment. And then we'll do a brief overview of the management and see if there's any things within the management team that we should be noting. And then once we've gone through all of this, if we do decide the company is worthy of investment, we'll look at the next step um, in the process before making an investment. As always guys, this video is for educational purposes only and is not financial advice before making any investment decisions, make sure you do go and see a licensed financial advisor. Okay, so let's start off just by going to Talga's website. We'll see if there's anything on their website that uh, can provide us some information on what the company does. On their homepage, not so much. There is a tab here, why invest in Talga? It says learn more. Let's have a quick look at that. So. Talga Group is a vertically integrated advanced materials company focusing on battery anode and graphene additive products. So that's pretty clear. We get a rough idea of what they're doing. Talga Mining in Sweden. So we know they're mining. Talga Advanced Materials Germany, where they process uh, the material that they've mined. And then Talga Technologies in the UK, which is product development and marketing. Um, I won't delve too much into this. There's a lot of text here. It is quite text heavy. Um, I've had a quick look just before the video at some of the investor presentations and annual reports, and it presents it in a much uh, more easily digestible manner. So we'll go and have a look at that now. Uh, the website I use um, mainly for company overviews is this one, Market Index. Uh, I'll show you why that is the case gives you a pretty good overview. We've seen Talga's had a massive return over the past year. Bit of a drop off here uh, coming into December, but that's the case with most growth stocks as I'm sure you've seen in the market. 
We'll just come down the page, uh, gives you a brief overview of the company. It does give you similar companies, although these aren't really direct competitors. I like that it gives you their upcoming calendar of when we can expect quarterly reports and the like. Uh, but here is the part of the website that I find particularly useful. Um, and that is the announcements page. So here we can filter for periodic reports, such so your quarterly earnings, annual reports, dividend notices. You can do it price sensitive only, super useful. So what I'll plan on doing to do the first part of the checklist, which is understanding the business, I'm going to go to um, an investor presentation. So you can see this one here uh, in December, which is nice and current. That's what we want. I'll open this up and I might skip through this until I find some appropriate slides and then I'll talk to those. So on page six of this investor presentation, we've got exactly what we want. It's a company overview and project update. So three key points. One, they're developing a green graphite anode. Second point is downstream exposure to uh, the EV supply chain. And then thirdly, NISCA scoping study and project update. So briefly, Tauga um, is developing an integrated graphite anode facility in Sweden, running on 100% renewable electricity. So it's mined to product ownership, which reduces costs. Um, tier one location being in Europe, which is close to all of your European car manufacturers. I talk about this downstream exposure. Uh, so they will be an integrated supplier of graphite anode products directly to the EV battery manufacturers. We'll get to more on this later. Uh, but it says here the current graphite anode supply chain is highly concentrated in China by manufacturers who utilize high, highly energy and emissions intensive processes. So I think the key point of difference here is the location of the supply chain being in Europe. Two, uh, they're really pushing this green approach. It's 100% you know, renewable um, and they're highlighting that perhaps the Chinese manufacturers are um, not particularly energy efficient. And here's a point here, Talga with its qualification progress, well progressed and full scale commercial production expected by 2023. More on this later, when we look at the, um, the timeline for the company, which they normally include in these investor reports, but this is really key. Um, at the moment, Talga isn't really producing anything. Um, a lot of the investment in this company is speculation based. Uh, they're not really turning a profit at the moment. So that point where they are expecting to commercialize their product is super important. This final item. Uh, so this is another operational target. Um, looks like another deposit that they're planning on um, trying to mine. Um, don't think that's super relevant for this part, but let's go back to the checklist and see how we've done so far. So we know what they do. They're mining and processing graphite for batteries, particularly for EV manufacturers. Their long-term goal, if we come back here, is a full mine to product ownership um, in a tier one location. So they want to supply directly to EV battery manufacturers. Um, and they're looking to meet the strong demand growth for European and North American car makers. So I think that's it in essence there. They want to be the key or primary supplier of battery materials to European and North American car makers, which is obviously a huge addressable market. Coming back to our checklist uh, and what milestones have they met already? Let's get to that point next. I just spoke about this earlier. Um, we mentioned this date being critical um, and normally a company will provide us with a milestone timeline. Um, so let me go and find that and I'll pull it up and we'll have a look. So here we are on page eight of the presentation and we can see this is Talga's milestone timeline. We can see what milestones they've achieved already and then we can see their plan going forward into the future. Before we mentioned that in 2023, they were looking at the full scale commercialization, which is 
commercial production here, this final activity, which is midway through 2023. Uh, now, considering the company is not profitable at the moment, we sort of need to determine what their cash runway is. Um, if profitability is not going to happen until commercialization, we know that until mid 2023, they need to some cash to survive and that can be sought by um, creditors or through investors. So it's going to be important when we look at the financials to see what sort of cash runway they've got. Uh, we're sort of expecting two and a half minimum years of cash that they need um, in order to survive until they commercialize. The other important point here is that potentially this timeline may blow out. Um, and we'll get to that in the key risks section. Uh, I would expect the company would mention that as a key risk. This is not a short term time frame, and there's a lot of processes here that could go wrong. You know, they're waiting on partnering, which is commercial deals, contracts can take a long time to sort out construction of plants. Again, construction is just inherently subject to delays. Um, and design and construction again of another plant. So there's trials going on here, all kinds of things that it seems difficult to draw a rigid timeline on. Obviously they have to forecast as best they can. And there's probably some contingency built into this, but um, really I think we need to be looking at one, two, three years minimum cash runway uh, for this company to survive. And we need to know how they plan on generating that cash. So back to the checklist, we've sort of knocked over all, all of the first section. Happy with that. We'll make that green. Doesn't look very good. Try that again. Awesome. Okay. So now let's do a high level financial review to complete this part of the analysis. I'm going to go to uh, my broker's website. Um, you could certainly use Yahoo finance or similar, uh, but self wealth, the broker I use has really good long-term financial data. So I'm going to jump over there. I've got Talga up on screen here um, and I've just gone into the financials tab. And this gives me really a 10 year snapshot, which is super useful. You can see their revenue was increasing for a number of years. And I believe this is because the company used to be focused on gold. Um, I think their name used to be Talca Gold or something like that in the past before they've switched to focusing on batteries and graphite. So what do we need to review here? Well, we'll come back to our checklist. First of all, revenue uh, doesn't look so good. Um, I think we can quickly knock this one on the head. If we come down to net profit after taxes or net income after taxes. Um, where are we here? Net income after taxes. It's all negative. You know, they've never been profitable. So a lot of these checks that we're going to do may not apply to this company because they are really in that research and development phase. So revenue, not really going to be important here. So I'll make that a yellow. The current ratio is super relevant. Um, the current ratio is how much cash they've got relevant to um, their short term debt. So this shows their coverage and it's really the strength of their financial position. So if we come back to self wealth, we can quickly get their current ratio by kind of ratios, collapse this one down to financial strength. And we can see here, uh, the current ratio is 3.47. Um, so that means they've got three times cash coverage over their debt. And if we go back to the financials, we can look at this, um, in detail in the balance sheet. So here's their cash. Um, instead of looking at the cash and short term investments, I prefer to just look at cash. So it's five. And then we're also looking for the total debt, which is here. Uh, we should probably be using 
the total liabilities. Yeah, so as it said, there's about, if I get the calculator out, so 5 divided by 1.7 or 1.5, yeah, 3.3 .3 times coverage, which is not too bad. Um, we'll look at what their competitors are like in this sense uh, a little bit later in the video to see how they stack up internationally. Uh, but that's it's decent coverage. Uh, it could be better, but I think we can assume from this calculation that at least for the next couple of years, they'll be okay. We should also have a look at the total shares or common shares outstanding, and this is the amount of shares that they're issuing to investors in order to generate more cash. And we can see this steadily rising year on year. It looks pretty consistent, uh, which, which is good, I guess, for a growing company. We don't want to see any major spikes in shares being issued. It sort of signals panic stations. Um, but we would expect this to slow as they enter profitability. So I think we can see they're generating most of their cash from investors at the moment their long-term debt or total debt um, has only just this year started to rise. So that's a good sign, you know, they're relying on cash from investors, which doesn't have any interest fees attached. Um, so that's positive. It shows that they can generate capital and they've been able to, for the past 10 years, generate enough capital to survive. Um, and they're obviously building momentum at the moment as well. So I think from this snapshot, we could say that, yes, it's likely they will survive until 2023, provided they keep these debt levels low and rely on cash coming in from shareholders. Back over to the checklist now. So the current ratio looked good. We'll give that a green color. Uh, shares outstanding, we also reviewed, and that looked reasonable. Yes, it is increasing year on year, but that is their main source of cash. Equity growth is another one. Equity growth is obviously the sum of the assets and the debt of a company. And we like to see equity growth um, increasing year on year in a healthy company. So if we come back and have a look at that total equity here, it was doing okay for a better one, two, three, four, five year stretch. But since then it's been heading south. Um, and that's not because debt has been reducing. Uh, obviously assets have been heading south. Um, let's see if we can find that. Yeah, total current assets were at the highest around 17, now down to five. Um, can we see any more from the balance sheet um, about this property plant and equipment is going up. So it's not that component. Um, it's quite hard to tell just from this page, why their assets are reducing. You might have to give me a bit more time to look into this, um, but I think we'd save that for probably the next step. Uh, we'll park that aside for now. It's a bit of a red flag. I'm not sure why You know their assets have more than halved. We'll need to find out what they are. And you can do that by looking at the annual report over the past four years to see what assets they're actually writing off um, in order to drop their total assets and therefore reduce the equity. Um, that would be a good thing to look at before investing. For now, and to keep this video short enough, we'll leave that. Um, and let's move on. We'll go back to the checklist. So equity growth, yes, there's a question there. Further investigation required. So we'll make that yellow as well. Okay, the next section is probably one of the most important and that's their competitors and competitive advantage. So I'll pull back over to the investor presentation, give me a minute and I'll go and find a relevant slide for this one. Okay, so I'll just sidetrack for a second uh, before we get to the competitors and competitive advantage. Just looking at this slide came up um, on Talga's investor presentation and it gives you a good idea of exactly what they're doing. This is their Talga integrated project. So it's the supply of the graphite and the anode production. So pretty clearly here, they're not involved in the battery manufacturing and they're not involved in the EV production. So it tells you their production goals, um, 
tells you their revenue estimates um, and then it tells you how they're going to scale the project using the NISCA scoping study um, which is a separate mining project um, and their target is to become the largest lithium ion, lithium ion battery anode producer outside of China um, and that's their sort of target date to hit that which is 2025 to 2026. Again, on this slide, we're seeing a little bit about their um, operations and where they're based and their movement of materials as well. Pretty good slide. And I think that's why these investor presentations are so useful. They give you a very good, clear visual representation of what the company is doing. We're also seeing some good information here on uh, the EV sales growth projections. Um, and obviously this translates to a demand for the batteries, which Talga are producing a main component of. And again here, another very important roadmap, and this is more to do with the legislation around EV cars and when different governments have you know, banned or uh, restricted the sales of conventional gasoline and diesel cars. Um, this is all to do with the market that they're in. Um, it's good to read, understand and absorb especially if you're not up to date with the news on EVs. Um, pretty much all the information you need to know is captured in this presentation. And again, here we've got a review of who they're actually planning on supplying. We saw before in that small table that Talga is not manufacturing batteries. They're supplying anodes to the manufacturers. And in this slide, we can see exactly who they are. Um, got North Volt, which obviously looks like a sister company or subsidiary of Volkswagen um, and all these different companies, LG, Samsung, Tesla in Germany. Um, so this is their target market essentially. Now here is what I think is the key slide, which tells us why Talga is worth investing in more so than another battery or graphite producer. In this slide, we can see in mining, grade is key. And this is the resource graphite grade. Um, it's obviously the quality of the graphite. And we can show that uh, Talga's mine in Sweden is 24%. I'm not sure if this is purity or, or whatever the, um, the CG here is. Not super relevant, but we do know that compared to the competitors, some are Canadian, some American, one is Australian, um, the quality is far superior. It doesn't tell you who these companies are, but we'll get to that in a moment because I think it will reveal this later in the report. We'll get to that in a second. So here again, we're seeing uh, why Talga sees itself as a leader in the market. It talks about their Tal node, uh, which is their trademark graphite anode, and it's got attractive performance characteristics uh, compared to some of the competitors. So fast charging, high energy density, uh, production costs, advantages, long life cycle, um, and low carbon emissions footprint. And here again, we can see uh, a snapshot of the supply chain uh, showing here under the raw materials banner. That's where Talga lies. Um, here they are here, Talga battery material supplier, and then pushing those products to the cell manufacturers. On this slide, we're seeing some promising signs for the company. Um, they have already established a range of partnerships and some public partnerships include uh, LCAB, ABB, um, Jaguar, you know, all of these premium brands. And they're saying that there's ongoing discussions with others, um, in, including the OEMs of the actual vehicles uh, for supply agreements. So I think this proves that companies are actually taking Talga pretty seriously if they're entering discussions. And this is positive news for investors. Um, and it sort of gives you a little bit of security that this company is for real um, and big brands across the world are taking them seriously. And on this slide, we can see um, a snapshot of their mines and the mines growth potential. So we looked at their three key activities earlier in the video and it mentioned this NISCA um, development. And it was kind of a little bit difficult to know what they're talking about, but here it makes it very clear. You've got this, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce this properly, but the Nunasara South Mine, which um, is a near-term focus. And then you've got your longer-term 
expansion, which is this Niska North and South, um, shows us that they're thinking about battery or graphite demand uh, going into the future, looking at the lifetime of mine, which is 14 years on this North project and 22 years um, for the current near term focus. So it's quite a decent uh, length. They will need to find more, obviously, if they want to continue past 20 years. Um, however, at least they've thought about you get 22 years plus another 14. That's a substantial amount of operating time and gives them time to find more, um, I guess, deposits of graphite. So I could go on and on about this, but I thought it would be best to um, wrap this section up. So here we are, um, competitors and competitive advantage. So does the, ha does the company have any key features which make it unique and resistant to competition? Yes, we've been able to identify that. We've seen that the graphite that they're pulling out of the ground is considerably more pure or concentrated than some of their competitors. So yes, we can tick this one off. Now, these final two questions under this checklist, who are the company's main competitors? And is there a risk of losing market share to these companies? So this one, we can probably already answer no, because of the quality provided they can keep up the demand. And we've answered the demand question by looking at the two, the two mines that they're planning on developing um, and the length of the mine life uh, for those separate mines. So we could get into more detail there, but for the purpose of keeping this video to a decent time, we'll make that one green. We'll come back to the presentation now to answer this one. Who are the company's main competitors? You can see here, Talc is listed on top. This is the grade of their output. Um, Mason is the next company. So these are, we saw that chart earlier, which had the list of different companies and then the purities listed down next to them. This is essentially these companies and they've named them. So Mason, if we have a look at Mason, Google Mason Graphite, we can see Mason Graphite is LLG on the Canadian exchange. So we'll type that in. Here's Mason Graphite. Looks like pretty similar price growth that Talc has seen. Um, we'll just jump on this first link here and see sort of what their performance is like. See their current ratio here is far stronger than Talc's. That's an interesting point. Mason Graphite is a mining and processing company. Happens in Canada. Um, 250 claims covering an area. So it's in operating Quebec. Um, okay, so that's one competitor. It's a pretty low valued stock. So it's not a big player um, in the market, pretty similar to Talgo, but we know that their current ratio is a little bit better. So that coupled with the fact that if we go back to the presentation, we can see that Mason actually has a pretty good grade of graphite. It's not quite comparable to Talga, um, but the company looks to be in a, from a very high level review, they look to be in a little bit better shape than Talga. Uh, if we have a look at Focus, for example, so Focus, also Canadian, that's FMS. Let's have a look at what their price movement's been. Wow, very small company. You know, they're, they're trading at five cents. Uh, we'll have a look at their current ratio as well, just for a quick comparison. Absolute garbage, 0.41. So yeah, that's a small company. Um, I mean, very hard to compare them at this stage, but yes, their output's reasonably high, but they're a very, very small company. Uh, we could go and look through more and if you wanted to, and if you were serious about investing in Talga, it probably would be a good exercise to go through each of these companies and see what their financial health is. That's just a brief snapshot. Um, just wondering if we can see the Australian one here. Northern could be, I don't recognize any of these names. If you know who the Australian graphite producer is, um, let me know in the comments below and I'll have a look at that company and see how they compare with Talga, maybe in a future video. So back to the checklist. 
who are the company's main competitors. So we've been able to identify those, so that's great. And then that enables us to go into more detail if we choose to, um, to see uh, how strong that competition might be. But I think Talga's done a great job of differenti differentiating themselves um, with the quality of their graphite. So we'll move on, the key risks. So this one, you can find it in the IPO prospectus, but Talga has been around for quite some time. So potentially the risks in the IPO outlined are not really relevant today. So in the investor presentation, we may find um, the risks listed. So just give me a minute and I'll have a look for those. Okay, so on page number 47 of the investor report, there is a section and it is text heavy, but it is the key risks. Um, and usually these risks are listed in order of importance. Let's go through them and see if they pick up on anything we've talked about so far. So here it talks about operating and budget risks. So costs and use of the company's cash resources are based on certain assumptions with respect to the method and timing of exploration. This is exactly what we were talking about before. And it's good that the company has highlighted this in their key risks because it means they're planning for it. So I guess in the second section here, they're talking about additional requirements for capital. Um, and I presume in here, it will talk about how they plan to continue to acquire capital. So it talks about the company may seek to raise further fun funds through equity, shareholders, debt financing, joint ventures, production sharing, so on and so forth. Uh, and it talks about project delay. So it's identified, we, we know that's an issue. We've reviewed the balance sheet. We've understood that and we've had it confirmed now in the investor report. If we keep going, the next one is licenses. So this is obviously getting mining approvals in Sweden, um, intellectual property risks. So this is their processing technology, um, I would imagine. Mineral and exploration risk. Again, uh, what does it say here? The business of exploration is risky speculative cost overruns and unforeseen events can hamper exploration. So nothing uh, we wouldn't expect here. Development and commercialization. Doesn't mention anything here about um, competitors yet. Resource estimates, pandemic risk, climate change. So nothing really here on competitors, which is interesting. I guess they feel they're in a strong position. Um, but a big bold one here, underwriting risk. Uh, the company has entered into an underwriting agreement with lead manager who have agreed to fully underwrite. If certain conditions are not satisfied, the lead manager may terminate the underwriting agreement. And if this fails, or the company cannot meet its objectives, the company would be required to find an alternative financing. Fair enough. Okay, so most of the risks are, you know, environmental permits, cash related, pretty normal and usual things uh, for a mining company like this. So back to our checklist, we can see uh, key risks for the company. We've reviewed them, we understand them, um, and we've applied some common sense. Uh, we've seen their ability to raise capital through shareholders. We're satisfied with that. Um, there's not much we can really do about permit risks and that sort of thing, uh, except for wait until they've achieved or secured these permits before investing. I mean, if you go in early on a company like this, obviously that is always a risk. The later you invest, potentially the pricier the company will be, but the more secure you will feel about your investment, knowing that they've got all the things in place in order to start production and commercialization. So we'll check that one off. We'll give it a green. There's nothing unusual that screamed out to us. So the final part of this analysis is management. Are the founders of the company still involved? And do they have industry experts on the management team? So we'll go back to the presentation. I think this presentation has pretty much contained everything we need so far. Give me a minute and I'll try and find the management section. So we can see here, found the management section. It's on page 37. Here's Mark Thompson, he's the managing director and founder. So he founded Talga in 2009 and listed the company in 2010. Um, and he used to be on the board of Catalyst Metals. So thumbs up, 
the founder's still working at the company. That's a positive because we all know the founder is probably the hardest working person on the team. Looking through their other executives, we can see a wealth of experience. Um, we've got someone experienced in tax in terms of their money management. We've got guys who've worked in complex engineering at Siemens. Um, there's a really big wealth of experience on this team, big management team. You got locals from Sweden where they're mining. Um, and then you got segmentation, you've got guys who are in charge of battery technologies. We could go into more detail in this video regarding management, but I think we've we've met the requirements um, at a high level. The founder's still involved, and we've seen there's a wealth of experience across a wide range of disciplines um, and some local executives as well, which will be important for this company continuing to grow. So back to the checklist, are the founders of the company still involved? Yes, they are, it's a massive positive. Do they have industry experts on the management team? From a high level review, yes, they do. So now that we've been through this checklist, we need to consider what's next. The next step of the process would be to undertake a detailed financial analysis and to determine how well the company's been doing over the past one, three, five, and even 10 years, if the data permits us. Um, now I normally complete this um, in Excel. You can see here, I've done an example with Talga. Um, unfortunately, because they're not profitable, a lot of the calculations just don't work because they're negative. Debt to equity works and they do have some positive results. You see I highlight numbers which are strong in green, numbers which are average in orange or yellow, and then numbers which are bad in red. Um, if you want to know how to conduct all of these calculations, you can see I've done uh, one for Pushpay, one for PointsBet, and a whole bunch of other companies that are on the, on the spreadsheet. If you want to know how to complete this next step, um, if you are interested in investing in a company and you've already been through this checklist, then I've covered all of this detailed financial analysis in my Skillshare video. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. You can try Skillshare for free uh, through a 14 day trial. You're just gonna click my link um, and then you, you're free to watch that video um, if you're interested in doing that detailed financial analysis. And then also knowing if you are satisfied um, that it's something you want to invest in, uh, then timing the entry into the market and getting that company at the best price um, in their given market cycle. We all know prices go up and down and it's knowing when uh, a company's price is at the bottom of a price cycle and then investing at that moment. So I cover that all in that Skillshare video. So I won't go over it again now. Uh, feel free to check that out. Um, it helps support the channel, of course. So I would really appreciate your support. Anyway, so that's pretty much my review um, of a company at a high level. It takes about you know an hour and then you might do further research on competitors, management, and go into details uh, if you find things where there's a question that appears like we did for equity growth and we know that further investigation is required. That's something I'll zone in on and try and understand why that's happening. Um, and that, I, that way you get a, a great picture of the company and you know whether or not you wanna go forward with investing. So thanks so much for watching. Um, again, let me know what you thought of this format um, and if you'd like a live stream soon, um, I can answer all of your questions there. But anyway, in the meantime, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.